Let's over to New York now and talk more about this with Shai Franklin. He is a partner with a New York-based lobbying firm, Gotham Government Relations. Good to have you with us. So what you've seen in Israel over the last uh, couple of days, what, what does this represent to you? And is this the end of it? Because it certainly doesn't look like it, judging by those protests. Well, this is the first step in a sense, chronologically, but it's much more than a first step thematically. This law that was passed in the Knesset today basically enables the Knesset to override a decision of the Supreme Court. So it no longer matters whether whether the majority coalition gets to decide who the new Supreme Court justices are, will they have term limits, or anything like that. This basically, if this law stands, this allows any majority government to basically change the rules so that they can remain majority government for as long as they want. They can bring in uh, convicted uh, convicted felons, as Netanyahu is a, will be doing shortly with Arya Derry. Uh, and what if he makes Arya Derry the minister of defense? Then the reservists have a good case for why they shouldn't obey orders from a minister of defense, who, according to the Supreme Court of Israel, should not be serving in the government in the first place. So the whole legitimacy of the government is now in question. Uh, the, the government, th there's already a group that has sued in the Supreme Court to appeal uh, this this law. If the Supreme Court rules that the law is illegal, then uh, then it really is a constitutional crisis. And the very legitimacy of the government is in question. And th that's much bigger than what happens to U.S.-Israel relations. Well, we'll come back to that what it represents in terms of the larger picture of Israel in a moment. But I want to ask you about the, uh, this, what the government, uh, the government's case here is they say that this change would enhance democracy by making essentially elected lawmakers freer to enact what voters uh, chose them to do. What's your view on that? Well, first of all, even though they have 64 seats in the Knesset, they did not have a majority of Israelis supporting them. Of course, there are uh, many uh, Palestinian... Israelis who who may not have voted. There are opposition parties that did not reach the threshold. They weren't able to consolidate their their votes, so those votes were dissipated among the uh, the larger parties. Uh, so even if it were democracy, though, and that is to say, even if it were a majority uh, of the Israeli people, uh, having a majority does not entitle one to a group to change the rules. Uh, that's that's not the democracy in a sustainable way. That means that whoever gets the most votes in one election can change the rules so that they can remain in power forever. Uh, the minority rights are a cornerstone of Israel's Declaration of Independence, a cornerstone of its whole constitutional principles. And a lot of the legitimacy that Israel has claimed vis-a-vis -vis Palestinian issues in the West Bank and Gaza, uh, saying that, that Israel does comply with international law, it complies with Israeli law, with rule of law and due process, all of this is is now essentially off the table, even even as a matter of debate. Uh, what does this tell us? What does this whole episode tell us about the deep divisions in Israel society right now, and the question of of how Israel uh, of Israel's whole identity as a country? It is in a in a crisis right now. It really is. I think. Um, there has been, but it's not just in Israel. We've seen this in, in many countries, particularly in the West, uh, where the whole concept of democracy, of minority rights, of, let's say, human dignity uh, has, uh, has been open to question now. We've seen it here in the United States. But with the Israelis, I think we see, uh, as I think Mustafa alluded to, a, a bleeding over from the, the occupation, honestly, in, in the West Bank. Uh, into Israeli politics. What, when you can do something to somebody else and you can justify it, it doesn't matter who that person is, uh, you then can justify it to, to do it to people closer to home. And we see now that the Israeli police are using some of the tactics that are used against Palestinians. Now that they have adopted this law, they may be able to, uh, to put people in, in jail for longer periods of time, Israelis, Jews, uh, in a way that they've done for Palestinians. So, uh, and so I, I think many of us have warned for a long time that the, uh, can, the, the, the delay in addressing the Palestinian issue will eat away at Israel's soul. And, and now I think we're seeing a large, a large adjustment in, in Israel's soul as a result, partly of that. Good to get your perspective on this, uh, Shai Franklin Thank in New York. Much. Thanks for your time.